How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today we're building this built-in hall tree. You might want to call it a built-in mudroom locker. Uh, you can call it an entryway shoe storage, entryway coat rack. Uh, there's tons of things you can call this thing. It's basically a hall tree except for we attached it to the wall. We got these oil rub bronze hooks. We got the core bells that are also oil rub bronze. We got a shelf up top. We got a shoe storage bench on the bottom. Let me show you how we built it. Hey, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you hit that thumbs up for me, I appreciate it. If you share this on your social media, I'll give you a virtual fist bump. Hey, don't forget to check the description down below. I always put useful show notes as well as links to the tools and supplies that we use in these builds. So let's get started. We're gonna build this. It's pretty easy. Let me show you how we done it. All right, so now we're fixing to take this frame piece off the wall, and then we're gonna put our faux shiplap on there. We're using quarter inch plywood. My local store calls it Luon. Quarter inch plywood, you can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot, things like that. So we're gonna cut those in five inch strips, attach those to the wall after we paint them. We're gonna paint them first before we put them up. We may have to do some touch up paint. And then we're gonna build our cubby bench for the entryway into our home so we can take our shoes off and have a place to store those as we come through the door. So first thing we're gonna do is cut that Luon or that quarter inch plywood and get that painted. Let's get started. This is quarter inch plywood. This is a generic circular saw, but this is a Craig Rip Cut. If you don't have one of these and you work with plywood at all, do yourself a favor and go get one. It's basically a saw guide, so you just flip that up you can move it up to 24 inches and as close as one inch. Uh, you just move it down until the mark says five inches, which is what we're gonna cut this piece is five inches. And then once it's at five inches, you'll lock it down and there it is. So I'm gonna cut 17 pieces, five inches wide. I probably will only use 16. I'm gonna get one extra because we're gonna be painting those and I don't wanna have to, have to come back and paint another one later and have to wait for it to dry. And it'll be a whole ordeal. So we're gonna start putting our shiplap on. What we're gonna do is take these five inch strips that we painted earlier and we cut out and painted. I'm gonna start on the floor and go up until we decide it's high enough. Got two nickels to rub together. No. All you need is two nickels to rub together. What we're gonna use for spacers is nickels. We got two, we'll put one on each end after we get the first one uh, put in place. I'm just gonna brad nail these. Uh, according to my designer, my wife, we're gonna to try to keep the brad nails in a very straight line because apparently that's part of the design. Here we go. Right, we're gonna build our cubby bench out of this three quarter inch sanded birch plywood. This stuff is really beautiful. I, I always hate cutting this stuff up because it just, it looks so good. But once you make the project out of it, it's that much better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, this bench is 48 inches wide and I need it to be um, 47 and a quarter because there's gonna be trim on one end is three quarters of an inch to make it perfectly 48 inches. It's gonna be 18 inches deep, again with a three quarter inch trim on the front. So that makes it 17 and a quarter. We want it 18 inches high with two dividers in there. I'm going to attempt, I've never done this, I'm going to attempt to cut rabbits in there so that the uprights, there's gonna be two uprights, will set into a groove on the top and the bottom on the dividers and it'll get, make it more sturdy, I hope. And uh, let's hope that works out because I only have this one sheet. Holy mess, that was a chore doing the rabbits uh, with that cordless router. That was a whole lot more than that thing wanted to take on. It, uh, it was struggling to do that. And it took me forever to get those rabbits set just right with my edge guide and my depth. First time I ever done those, I almost gave up and just done pocket holes. But 
I've struggled through and now I've got it. Fix and put these together, glue, brad nails, maybe some screws on the bottom side, not the top, because that's where I want everything to uh, be nice and smooth. So that's what we're gonna do now. I've got my two end pieces, my top and my bottom, and then I will take that piece over there and cut it to size to fit inside these rabbit uh, grooves. Uh, so that's what we're doing. That feels pretty good because these fit perfect. Cool. Never done that before. Never used these rabbits. I like it. A lot more work. A lot more stable though. I like this. There she is. Check it, check it, check it. That looks good. So I'm extremely happy how those rabbits turn out. So you see they're a nice tight fit. Corners look good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna let this glue dry. I've just got it brand new. Got a clamp on it, just kind of holding everything nice and tight. It's square uh, because of those rabbits. Everything just squared up nicely. This will be sanded and painted the same color white as our shiplap. And then I'm gonna put some trim one by on the front, a three inch piece across the bottom, and then we'll trim the uh, front out, just kind of shaker style. And a little on this one end, kind of give it a finished look. Uh, the other end is gonna go against the wall, so we don't have to worry about that. It's time for that trim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take a piece of three of one by like a one before and rip that three inches. Take that three inches, and we're going to uh, 45 each end to make that look a little better on each end here. <clears throat> and then wait a I don't know what I'm going to do there. Fixing to go look how I did my TV stand. Then it won't make this match. So it may I may square that off. Anyway, I'm going to take a three inch strip on the bottom. It's going to be flush with this edge here. I want that flush. And then it's gonna go down three inches. So this will be off the floor three inches, but all the way around. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. I've got this uh, one by that I've cut down three inches, three inches wide. It's an inch and a half longer than 48 inches so that it, I'm just gonna square these off. And then I've attached a two and a quarter inch strip of plywood to the back. And the reason for that is I'm gonna let this rest on this. This is the bottom. So this will actually be the resting and then there will be one across each end here down there and then i'll put two uh right in line with these um, uprights so that'll give us a nice stable base for the uh, bench to sit on and i just thought it'd work out like that so that's what we're doing What I've done is I've got the three inch strip on the bottom all the way around, and then I've used that plywood, uh, just stripped some plywood, I had some extra. Uh, I just stripped two and a quarter inches because it's two and a quarter inches from the bottom of, the, of your cabinet to the bottom of the foot. So two and a quarter inches uh, on each of those pieces. And that gives it a nice sturdy uh, base to stand on. And then it also raises that up off the floor. That way you don't just have plywood sitting on the floor. And now we've got a nice base. Next, what we're gonna do is trim this out with one by material, just to keep that face, uh, hide the edge of that plywood. And also we're gonna do a, kind of a shaker style on the ends there, just square cut stuff uh, to trim that out and kind of give it a more finished look. So now it's time to trim this in and out. We're just gonna do that with some one by material. I've cut this an inch and a half thick. I'm gonna put this on the top. We're gonna flush with the front, flush with the back. And then we're going to have a piece here that's also an inch and a half. And on this piece, what you want to do is cut one that's half of an inch and a half, which is three quarters of an inch wide. And you're going to put that on there flush with the front edge right now. Because when you put this other piece of trim on there, on the front, you want that to be a, a total of an inch and a half, which is what we're going to have. We've got a three quarter inch thick uh, trim and then a three quarter inch piece that we're putting in there and that'll make it look uniform. If you put an inch and a half here, and then you put another piece there, it's gonna to be too thick. It's gonna look, it's not gonna look uniform or, or look consistent. So that's what we're doing. Glue and Brad nail these on.
So we got our trim on now. We're gonna, I'm gonna use this DAP. It's plastic wood X, it's, uh, it's wood putty. I'm gonna fill these brad nail holes and I'm gonna fill any gaps that I think are too, too wide. And you just wanna kinda of fill those in. This stuff dries pretty quick and then we'll sand it off. But you can see where I'm gonna, I'm gonna putty these brad nail holes so we don't see those. And those large gaps are right there like this. It's a little wider than I like, I'm gonna fill this. And uh, we'll get everything, once that dry, we'll sand this off. We're gonna put a top on this. We originally just thought we weren't going to, but now we've decided we are. It'll match our TV stand. We're just gonna use some two bias. I wanna get this primed, and while this is drying, then we can work on the top. All right, we got it sanded to 120 grit. That's really all I ever use. Every now and then I'll use a 60 or 80 if I really have to take a lot of material off, mostly just that 120. Uh, on this one, I'm using Diablo sandpaper. It works okay. Uh, Tiger Shark's probably the better of the sandpaper I've used. Anyway, we've got this sanded. I've got all that uh, wood putty that's it's sanded smooth now. It looks really good. Now we're gonna use, I use Cheryl Williams Quick Dry Stain Blocking Primer. Put one coat of that on. Once that's dry, then we're gonna use Benjamin Moore Advance in a, what's that color? Dove White. Dove White is the color. That's same as our kitchen cabinet, so it kind of matches the space. And it's really, really good paint. What I was impressed with was that paint is it's self-leveling. So it, it dries nice and smooth finish. Same thing we've painted our uh, shiplap with, faux shiplap. So that's what we're gonna do. About to prime this, then we're gonna paint it. All right, whoa, that's a little much. Let's back that up. So I got it primed. I use my Finish Max, my Home Right Finish Max. Uh, for a hundred bucks, man, it's hard to beat that paint sprayer. I've used it on tons and tons of projects and it's always come out looking good. So I, I recommend it if you wanna check it out, I'll drop a link in the description below. Also, I'll put a card up here. I, I did a review on that sometime back. It's been over a year and I've used it a lot. We're gonna let that dry. Now we're gonna build a top for that bench and we're also gonna build a shelf on our ship that wall to match the bench top. So we're gonna stain them a sun bleached is the name of the color. We're gonna stain them that color, but first we gotta build them. So let's pick out the lumber to build them with. And so this is my lumber storage area. It's uh, highly technical as you can see, everything's sorted nicely. And so we're gonna go, <laughs> go through this sorted lumber and find us something to make a top out of. Okay, so what I've decided to do, is I, have, I have two tuba tins and I have three tuba sixes, but I only need one. So I'm gonna take this tuba tin and cut it 50 inches. I'm gonna cut two pieces at 50 inches. My bench is just a little over 48 inches, so it'll give just a little overhang on each side. And then it'll also give a little overhang on the front because it's 18 inches deep. And a tuba tin is nine and a quarter. So, and then on our shelf, I'm gonna join two tuba sixes together uh, with pocket hole screws. I'm gonna do the bench pocket hole screws also for my joinery. And then that'll give me enough because my core bells are 10 inches or nine and seven eighths. And I can cut these down to be just about 10 inches long, which will work out just right. So that's what we're doing. These are also gonna be 50 inches for my shelf. So I'm gonna do a 50 inch shelf, 50 inch bench seat, cut those down. And then we're gonna joint them with my table saw. And after we do that, we'll put pocket holes in them, pocket hold them together, sand them, stain them, be ready. All right, I got my pocket holes drilled in the tuba tens and the tuba sixes. So this is gonna be my shelf and this is gonna be our bench seat. On the shelf, the pocket holes I will turn to the top since it'll be so high. I don't want those to be underneath where you can actually see them so they'll be on top of the shelf. I'll never see them. These will go down onto our bench so you'll never see those pocket holes either. Uh, they put four in each one. I'm gonna put glue in there. 
and then just uh, two and a half inch coarse thread pocket holes screws is what we're using put these together then we'll be able to sand this and get it ready for stain I got them sanded, so we're going to use Minwax pre-stained wood conditioner. I always use this on my products, and it's open. Splash your wood. What I do is I like to put this on and let it dry for at least 30 minutes before you put your stain on there. Uh, that helps open, especially on pine. It opens the pores up and lets that stain uh, get in there better. I usually use a generous amount, get that rag soaking wet, and just slap it on there. Rub it around. Just make sure it's got a good even coat. You don't want it pulled up on there. As long as you spread it out, it'll soak in. And for the bench top, I'm not going to do the underside simply because there's no need in it. It'll be face down on our bench and we'll never see it. So make sure you get all four edges and then the top. So this is set about 30 minutes. I just put another coat on the base of paint. We're going to let that dry and we're going to stain at the same time. This is Verithane Fast Dry Wood Stain in Sun Bleach color. It's an oil based stain. I shake it up a little bit, take a rag, use some gloves, and we're going to stain these two pieces. This is our bench top and our shelf. Let that dry for about an hour, maybe two, before we put it, actually install it. All right, our stain is dry. It's been drying about an hour and a half. That stuff does dry pretty quick, the very thing does. So now, what I like to finish it with and what we finish our TV stand with was just Johnson's Pace Wax. And what I like to do, this is 4 alt stainless steel wool 400. And so I'll take that and just take the wax and dip it in the wax and then just rub it on your, uh, your, your top and it'll dry hard. It's kind of a waxy feel when you're putting it on, it's wax. But once it's dry, it's hard. It's kind of a satin finish and makes everything uh, just give it a nice soft look. So I, we really like the way it looks. That's what we're going to do for both of these. And that's what we're doing now. Simple as that. That stuff goes on so easy. It's very easy to work with. We really enjoy using it. Uh, I've had most things that I use, I'll go ahead and put a coat of that on there. Even if I use General Finish's uh, high performance top coat, I'll go ahead and put a coat of this on there. And the reason you use the steel wool instead of just a rag is that wool acts as like a high grit sandpaper if you want to think of it like that. So any imperfections in the wood or your finish, it'll, it'll go ahead and knock those down. It'll make it a butter smooth finish. It's so smooth, it's like a fine finish. That's why I like it. I'll drop a link in the description below to the steel wool and the Johnson Space Wax if you're interested. So I'm about to attach the top, the bench top, to the base. I'm just going to use inch and a quarter screws screwed up through the plywood into the top. I know a lot of people don't recommend that because of wood expansion. We got two pieces of wood. I don't think it'll be a problem. If you do, you can use tabletop fasteners and do it around on the inside on top, it works the same. I am going to pre-drill my holes, countersink them, and then just, just drill them up. I think uh, probably four or six screws is probably plenty. Just enough to hold it in place, uh, make sure it's even on each side. 